image stabilization is really, really good. GoPro Hero 10 Black and why I think it sucks. Just want to capture interesting bits of your journey. Welcome to Nifty 50 Photographers. In today's video, we're talking about the GoPro Hero 10 Black and why I think it sucks. Now, it's not all bad news. So let me tell you uh, what is wrong with it and why I think it sucks. But the good news is actually there is some solutions out there that are a good workaround and will get you out of trouble. Before I'm all gloom and doom about the Hero 10 Black, I still went ahead and bought one. And there are lots of things I really love about it. I originally had a Hero 7 Black. Now, I wanted something that was an upgrade from this, but also something I could use alongside it. So to me, it was fairly uh, obvious to go for the GoPro brand because I wanted something similar. I was a little bit disappointed to find out actually that the two side by side, they're different sizes. So I couldn't use uh, my batteries from the Hero 7, for example. I bought a pack of three batteries for that, so I already had lots of nice spares. However, it's a different sized battery. The good news is the mounts are all the same. And the nice thing about the Hero 10 is it has this uh, little clamping mechanism on the bottom of the camera, so you can mount that straight onto their mounts. And I already had a wide selection of mounts. I bought one of those packs of 30 different mounts that you can get for about $30 from a well-known online retailer. But what I love about the Hero range is the image stabilization is really, really good. You can set the camera up in a, a flat profile, so if you're doing color grading in video and stuff like that, then it will work beautifully with that. So you get some really great image quality. It's very versatile, pretty light and neat, and there are tons of mounting options available. So for me, that was really uh, helpful and a useful feature. So a lot of the time, I'm either doing a vlog or recording action on a motorbike. So if I'm doing a vlog, I've actually got the camera coming facing towards me. Now, one of the drawbacks of the Hero 7 was the front screen doesn't show you the image you're filming. So that was a real bonus from the Hero 10. It's got a color front screen. I could see what I was going to be filming and that was one of my major reasons for being interested in it. Now, as I mentioned, I do a lot of uh, motorbike riding and filming um, of my motorbike trips. Now, anybody else who's done the same will know you don't want a three day trip to last three days in video. You just want to capture perhaps few minutes a day some interesting bits of your journey and then put them all together. So normally when I'm filming I'm setting the camera either I'm turning it on manually and off again or I set it just to film for a few minutes. So I recently made a trip round Iceland. This is a once in a lifetime trip. I was hiring a motorbike out there so riding around the country on a BMW 1250 GS. A great experience I can tell you. And I ended up mounting the GoPro on one of the engine protection bars using a handlebar mounting uh, um, bracket. The GoPro was pretty exposed to the elements. For those of you who don't know, temperatures in Iceland, even in the middle of summer, I went at the end of June. Typically the temperature was around 10 degrees Celsius, that's 50 Fahrenheit, or less. We often saw temperatures of 2 degrees Celsius, that's 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Probably with wind chill on top of that, it's going a lot lower. And what I found was I could literally only get two five minute clips per battery. I had two batteries, so that limited me pretty much to four clips a day. Now that's not really enough because you don't know when you're riding along, which are gonna be the most interesting bits. You probably want to get 10 or 15 clips, something like that. So I was really disappointed and I could only get those two five minute clips per battery. What do you do about it if you're still committed to buying a GoPro? Well, the good news is, obviously, I'm not gonna be cynical about this, but it's funny that GoPro have produced a battery you can buy that'll work, at they claim, minus 10 degrees Celsius or 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, they produce an Enduro battery, and I'll put a link to that in the description. 
and uh, that's supposed to give you a longer filming time, a quick charge time, and as I say, extended temperature range for filming. So there's one very good solution. The other option is, yeah, just to buy a load of batteries. And I bought a pack of three, complete with a charging module. I think it cost me around 30 pounds or probably $30 in the US. So that's another good workaround. So what I would say to you is, how are you gonna use your GoPro? If you're a snowboarder or a skier, or somebody who's gonna spend a lot of time in cold temperatures, you definitely need to think about getting that Enduro battery or carrying lots of spares with you. The other tip I should give you is, you should make sure that you turn the screens off after a few seconds of switching on so that you save battery life. Screens are one of the things that eat up the battery life if you have those on all the time. Now let me just tell you one other thing that I really love about this GoPro before we finish. And that is how rugged it is. I mentioned I mounted this on a cheap plastic uh, um, handlebar mount on, a, on a, the engine protection bars and uh, we were riding along and about two days into our trip it actually failed it clearly didn't like the vibration didn't like the cold and this ended up bouncing down the road falling off a bike at 50 to 60 miles an hour and it's got a few scuffs on it uh, had an nd filter over the, the lens so that's protected it has picked up a little scratch but i don't think it's in the field of view so that's probably all right you can buy a replacement lens for 10 bucks anyway, so it's not a big deal. But the best thing about it was when my friend who was behind and saw what happened, picked it up, passed it over to me, I gave it a try and it worked first time. But, oh, seems fine. Yeah, that's working. Cool. Is the rocket gone then? Yeah. Now that's a, a great testament to how rugged and how much shock and vibration that the uh, actual camera will stand. If you're wondering what to do next, why not take a look at my uh, video on a trip around Iceland and you'll see uh, you know, the amazing scenery and you'll see a little bit of GoPro footage before the bracket failed. I'll look forward to seeing you next time.